To receive credit for a certificate of completion for ticket dismissal and or an insurance discount, you must complete the registration process at wirelessdefensivedriving.com as required by the Texas Education Agency. You may continue to access this information for entertainment purposes only, but unless you register, you will not receive credit or a certificate for insurance or ticket dismissal. The following presentation is brought to you by wirelessdefensivedriving.com. And we're back. Thank you so much for sticking with us, whether you're listening on your iPhone or MP3 player or your computer when you're supposed to be working. Uh, we still appreciate you. Panel, we have some very serious to discuss today. Chuck, before we jump into that, I just heard that if you don't have both license plates issued to you on your car, that you can get a ticket up to $200. That's right, Judy. I'm amazed you guys are learning things outside our show here. But all cars aren't made with a place for the front license plate, so what are they going to do? That's right. I don't think the Prius does. Neither does the Corvette. Well, they're going to have to modify their cars to get a plate on the front unless they want a $200 ticket every time they go for a drive or to work. Man, I would really be p upset if I had to <laughs> drill holes in the front of my vet for a license plate. Okay, back to the serious subject at hand for today. That's good. I have my serious hat today. We're going to be talking about occupant restrainers and other protective equipment. I could honestly use a refresher course about, like, seat belts and helmets. I honestly don't know what the laws are and what's just common sense. And it's important to know, not just for safety's sake, which is certainly important, but also to obey the law. Now, yeah. starting with seat belts, you should all know that the law requires that everyone at least 15 years of age must wear a seat belt where the seat belts are provided in the vehicle. Front seat and back seat, both? Yep, front and back seat, everyone 15 and up. Anyone younger than 17 who is not required to be in a child passenger safety seat system must wear a seat belt, provided the vehicle has seat belts. This also applies to both the front seats and the back seats. Well, what did you mean by a child passenger safety seat system? Well, any child who's younger than 8 years of age, unless he or she is taller than 4 feet 9 inches, must be secured in a child passenger safety seat system, according to the instructions of the manufacturer of that system. Is this new? Well, not really. The law became effective September 1, 2009, but tickets could not be written until June 1, 2010. And in 2013, the fines were increased to between $25 and $250. Why the push for kids' safety? I mean, it's a good idea, of course. But what's the story? Well, according to the National Center for Health Statistics, motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for children 3 to 14 years old. National Highway Safety Administration estimates that roughly 3 out of 4 child safety seats are not used correctly. Correctly installed child safety seats and booster seats save lives, offering the best protection for children in the event of a crash. Good to know. Same rules for pickup trucks? Yes, and I'm glad you said pickup trucks, because it's also against the law to drive a pickup with a child under the age of 18 in the bed of the truck. I don't think anybody needs to be in the back of a truck, but that could just be me. And I'm with you. Moving on to vehicle control is our next topic. A safety belt means any lap belt and any shoulder strap that was included as original equipment when you bought your car or truck. Safety belts are required for all pickups, SUVs, and trucks. They're pretty much life belts, aren't they? No, I can't believe we never didn't wear them. Who can tell me the three things they do? Oh, I know one. They keep you from being thrown from your vehicle in the event of some kind of crash. And that's a huge one. Your chances of being killed are five times greater if you're thrown from your vehicle. Others? They keep you from hitting your head on your dashboard too hard. Yes, uh, Kathy, what do you think the third one is? Um, not getting thrown out, not hitting your head, um, not falling into the floor and breaking a rib on your stick shift. Did I tell you that happened to me when I was in college, or did you just randomly guess this event from my actual life? You told me, girl. I know all your stories. Oh, for you. I thought you were the, you were the amazing white man for a minute. Yeah. Well. Even though that actually happened to Judy, that's not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> Basically, they just help you maintain better control of your vehicle. Oh, I should have had that one. I certainly was not in control of my vehicle when I was in the floor of my VW without a seat belt. Really, driving got hugely safer when seat belts came along. They're designed to contact your body at its stronger parts. Where is that panel for an older child or an adult? Hips? Shoulders? You've got it. That's where they should be strapped. Lap and shoulder belts spread the force of the crash over a wide area of the body. Wider for some of us than others. Yeah, uh, <laughs> wider for some of us than five years ago. Sad but true. Ooh. 
By putting less stress on any one area, they can help you avoid serious injury. Now, shoulder strap also helps keep your head and upper body away from the dashboard, uh, steering wheel, and other hard interior parts of your car or truck should you stop suddenly or be hit by another car or truck. Really, seat belts help extend the time it takes for you to slow down in a crash. I never thought about it that way, but I guess you're right. Hmm? Can anyone tell me the two critical areas of the body that seat belts are designed to protect? Head and heart? No. Lungs? Mm, that doesn't sound right to me. Head, maybe. Yeah, um, actually, we need something a little more specific than head. Oh, oh, brain. Yes, sir. What's the other part? Oh, I know. Your spinal cord, so you won't be paralyzed. Right, you are. Brain and spinal cord. Now, let's talk about operational principles of seat belts. First, let me say that adjusting your seat belt properly is a must. It's non-negotiable. The strap that goes across your lap should fit snugly over your hips and your upper thigh area. Don't allow the belt to ride up on the stomach. It could cause serious injuries in a crash. What about that shoulder belt? I hate it when I'm driving somebody else's car and the shoulder belt hits me in the neck. Well, it really should rest securely across your chest and shoulders and between your breasts. Don't ever let the strap fall across your neck or your face, even if it's somebody else's car and you have to adjust it. You can always adjust it back. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but it's not good to put the strap under your arms, is it, or behind your back? Nope. I knew that. I don't know why I asked. I appreciate your participation. You really do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, next up, airbags. I have to say, I feel a lot better about my boys being on the road now that they're driving cars with airbags. Same here. My daughter has airbags all around her. They're a great safety innovation. As you know, they're cushions built into a vehicle to protect drivers and passengers from hitting the interior of the car during a collision. In order for them to be effective, they must deploy early in a crash. Anybody have a guess how quickly they deploy? I'm going to say within the first few seconds, like the first two or three. Actually, sooner than that, in a frontal crash, they're usually popping out within the first 50 milliseconds. Ooh. That's 0 0.05 seconds. Wow! It was amazing the one time my airbag deployed. I was just driving, thought the guy was going to run the stop sign and hit me, and then I saw that tan canvas before I even knew I was hit. Oh, no, it's crazy. The instant the crash begins, sensors start to measure impact severity. If the crash is severe enough, at or above the airbag deployment threshold, the sensors signal inflators to fill the bags with gas. The bags fill it in a fraction of a second to cushion the occupants in. Of course, your safety and protection are maximized if you're also wearing your seatbelts. Excuse me for interrupting. Our announcer, Mr. Microphone, everybody. Hello, hey, Mike. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank you. You have a caller, Chuck. Oh, Judy, will you talk to him? I feel like I need a cup of joe. Oh, sure thing. Um, hello, caller, and welcome to the program. Oh, hello. I'm calling because I want to say that I'm the proud owner of Joe's Cars on Money Saving Mile and Gullin, and right now I'm having a sale on pickles and all of them. I quit with front airbags and even a back seat back. Heck, there might even be airbags in the stereo speakers. So everyone should hurry on down to Joe's car. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, Joe, but I can't let you sneak in such a blatant commercial for your dealership. But all my cars have airbags stored in the steering wheel for the driver. And they are instrument panel for the front passenger. Oh, now if you have a question... I do have one, actually. Did you know that some manufacturers provide knee airbags mounted in the lower instrument panel? Uh, we don't have any, but... Uh, okay, Joe, well, goodbye, and <laughs> thanks so <laughs> much for calling. The airbags distribute impact forces to reduce the leg injuries. They also help reduce force on the occupant's chest and abdomen by controlling movement of the occupant's body. H hanging up now. Uh, Joe's cars, uh, 634 Garland Road, next to where the Astro Drive-In used to be. Uh, okay, and thank you so much, Joe, for calling in. Oh, man, times are hard. I don't blame him for trying to scam a little air time. <laughs> I think I just drove a car from Joe. He drove around in a circle and made me motion sick. <laughs> How, however, comma, he's right about the airbags, I think. In fact, sneaking a look at Chuck's book of infinite wisdom, I see that more and more cars have side airbags that deploy when you're hit from the side. They're usually smaller and deploy from the vehicle seat back or roof and protect the front seat occupants and sometimes even the back seat passengers. I cannot get over Joe trying to get in a free commercial. <laughs> I mean, for real. <laughs> I do have a question, though. Do some airbag systems protect the body, you know, chest, abdomen, pelvis, and some just protect the head? Why, it says right here that those 
airflows that protect both head and torso are optimal. Head protecting airbags may extend into the rear seating area. Rear seats may also have head protecting side airbags separate from those in the front seat or airbags that provide torso protection. Okay, I'm back. Did I miss anything good? <laughs> well, uh, no, not really. Okay, then. Let's talk about helmets and other protective equipment. It still looks weird to see somebody riding a motorcycle with no helmet. Is that legal? No, it depends on the age of the rider, I think. Huh? Right. All riders under the age of 21 are required by law to wear a helmet when operating a motorcycle. Now, riders over 21 may ride without one only if they've completed a safety course or are covered by an applicable insurance plan. That's interesting. I didn't know that about the insurance. To ride without a helmet, Texas law requires folks to be covered with a health insurance for injuries incurred in a motorcycle accident. And that proof of insurance better be in your wallet. Helmets are like seat belts. By the time you need them, it's too late to put them on. You wouldn't see me on the road without a helmet, no matter how good I look flying along the highway. <laughs> that, and that's the best policy, of course. Okay, panel. Ready to play a little multiple choice game about motorcycle safety? Oh, we were all board ready. Yeah, yeah, that we were. Deal. Yeah. I'm going to ask yeah. you a question, and you tell me which is the best answer. Let's start with uh, Kathy. You ready? Like the man said. Born ready. Girl. Because motorcycles don't have the same protection that cars and trucks have, there's certain steps a biker should take to be as safe as possible. Now, which of these is not a good idea? A. Wear a helmet and other protective gear. B. Turn on your headlights and ride defensively. C. Play Born to be Wild loudly on your bike radio. <laughs> D. Ride at a safe speed and never ride if you've been drinking. Well, Chuck, I'm going to say this is a tough one because you know the proper soundtrack is important <laughs> in any on-road adventure. Mm -hmm. I will say, however, choice C, no born to be wild needs to be played. <laughs> and that's right. <laughs> it's also a good idea to take a course to learn safe riding techniques. A course like this one. Like this one, indeed. But there are courses for motorcycle riders. You get a discount on your motorcycle insurance for taking one of those courses just like you can by taking this course. Now, next question. This one's for uh, Judy. Other drivers need to keep their eyes out for motorcycles and safely share the road. True. Uh, it's not true or false. It's multiple choice. Oh, well, sorry, I forgot. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Now, here's the question. Which of these should drivers do? A, look twice for motorcyclists at intersections entering highways. B, look twice for motorcyclists whenever turning or changing lanes. C, always maintain a safe following distance. D, when passing a motorcyclist, move to the other lane and allow a full lane for the motorcycle. Chuck, I think you have tried to trick me. I think every one of those is a good answer, and yet you did not say E, all of the above. Judy, they sure don't hand out those theater arts degrees to fools. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Actually, I wasn't trying to trick you. I just forgot to make up a bogus answer. <laughs> I'm relieved. Okay, well, this one's for Tony. All right. Which of the following are additional protective equipment available for the motorcyclist or the bicyclist? Which of these four are good additions to rider's wardrobe? A, goggles to protect eyes from debris and foreign matter. B, vests with American flags on the back. C, clothing designed to protect the wearer's body from injury by blunt impacts, debris, road rash, and other unexpected hazards. And D, those really cute headbands everybody's wearing now with the big, bold flowers on them. Mm, I'm going to say D, headbands. Stylish though they may be. Right you are. And did you notice that I just channeled Bridget from our last section? <laughs> I felt like I was at the mall. Oh, me too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay, panel. <laughs> we need to talk about something, and this is a really serious matter. So no games, no callers, nothing wacky. This is about the dangers of leaving children in unattended vehicles. My gosh, I wish I just hadn't heard about three different cases of people doing that, that, that it, very thing. Mm -hmm. Hard to imagine. But just like we sometimes change our daily routine and realize we left our cell phone or briefcase in the car, some people have had the same thing happen to them with their kids, and it can be disastrous. It sure can, because even when it's not too hot outside, which is never in the state of Texas except maybe New Year's Day, it's hot in that car, or it can be. No kidding. Even cool temps in the 60s can cause the temperature in your car to rise well above 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The inside temperature can rise almost 20 degrees within the first 10 minutes. I've heard of some kids dying in a hot car that they climbed into without any adult knowing they were in there. They get inside, get confused by how the door works, or they even get trapped in the trunk and can't get out before they have heat stroke. Let's see if we can help keep this from ever happening again by discussing some prevention tips. All right, first, never leave a child unattended in a vehicle. 
Second, don't let your child play in an unattended vehicle. Teach them that a car or truck is not a play area. Never leave infants or children in a parked car, even if the windows are partially open. I try to make it a habit to look in my SUV front and back before I lock the door and walk away. Now, this is a good way to actually get into work with the lunch I bothered to pack also. <laughs> Just saying. And if you're dropping a child off at daycare and normally it's your spouse or partner who drops them off, have that person call you to make sure the drop-off went according to plan. And, of course, ask your child care provider to call you if the child does not show up. Well, that's a good idea. You can also do something to remind yourself that a child is in the car, like writing yourself a note and putting it where you can't help but see it when you leave the car. Or you could put your briefcase or your purse or something that you'll need in the back seat so you'll have to check the back seat when you get out of the car. These are all great ideas. You can also keep an object in the car, such as a stuffed toy. When the child is buckled in, place the object where you or the driver, if it's someone else than you, will notice it when he or she is leaving the vehicle. Always lock your car doors and trunks and keep the keys out of the reach of your kids. And if you suddenly find you can't locate your child, always check your car first, including the trunk. And if you see a child alone in a hot vehicle, call the police. Don't worry about making those parents mad. If that kid is in distress because of the heat, get them out as quickly as possible. You should cool them rapidly and call 911 or your emergency number immediately. It seems like lately we hear too often of daycare centers accidentally leaving a child behind with tragic results. It's just so sad. But it's terrible. And that's why a new law passed requires licensed daycare centers to equip any vehicle owned or leased by the facility used to transport children under their care or seats eight or more persons with an electronic child safety alarm. Here's what you need to know now and remember. Vehicles heat up quickly, even with the window rolled down two inches. If the outside temp is in the low 80s Fahrenheit, the temperature inside can reach deadly levels in only 10 minutes. Children's bodies overheat easily, and infants and children under the age of four are those at most risk for heat-related illnesses. They also absorb more heat on a hot day than an adult. They're also less able to lower their body heat by sweating. When a body can't sweat enough, that little body's temperature rises really fast. That is so true, Kathy. In fact, when left in a hot vehicle, a young child's body temperature may increase three to five times as fast as adults. High body temperature can cause permanent injury or even death. It really scares me to talk about this stuff. I have known of several cases of little kids dying in cars in our hometown from just carelessness. Well, heat is dangerous. Now let's talk about the symptoms of heat stroke. I think they can vary, but some I've heard are red, hot, and moist or dry skin. Also, sometimes a person with heat stroke may not sweat at all. They can also have a strong rapid pulse or a slow weak pulse, a throbbing headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, being grouchy, or acting strangely. And again, if you see a child in a car with no adult around, don't hesitate to call 911 and try to get that child out and cool down ASAP. Mm -hmm.